Welcome. Thank you all for being here. Uh, before we get started, I want to welcome Jesus Garza with Seton, their CEO and president. Thank you for being here. And also uh, Trish Young Brown with Central Health. And appreciate you being here, Trish. Uh, also, uh, Sly Majid from um, the, the uh, mayor's office, thank you. We're sorry, uh, Mayor Leffingwell couldn't be with us, but we appreciate you being here. Um, thank you all for coming today. Uh, this is truly a historic day for uh, the UT system, for UT Austin, and, and for Austin. The U UT Board of Regents uh, has voted to fund the construction of research and educational facilities to create a medical school at UT Austin. It isn't every day that a premier research university gets a medical school. In fact, it has not happened uh, for about 35 years. As regents, we carefully consider how our universities interact with the communities in which they are a part. We think about how the research we conduct and the students we teach affect our communities in a positive way. The Board of Regents has looked carefully at this project and we believe it is a well, it is well placed to have an incredible impact on research and education in this community. The site plan for this project brings together the best in academic and community resources. It will be the first four-year medical school on a UT campus ever. And its location is by design. It will be part of the academic campus and also part of the community. Medical students need both classroom education and opportunities to participate in healing patients. This plan gives them both. We believe that this is an excellent investment, a sound plan, and an endeavor that will have real impact on the lives of Texans. The Board of Regents is very proud to support this plan and to support UT Austin in this plan. And now I'd like to turn it over to uh, Chancellor Figueroa. <coughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is really an incredible moment and an opportunity to discuss uh, something that will be transformational for our state and, and for our nation. Uh, about two years ago, uh, my team uh, came together uh, to really build upon a vision, which is how can we improve the health of Texas, our nation, and the world. And one of the important objectives in that goal was to establish a school of medicine at our flagship university, the University of Texas at Austin. You know, the opportunity to educate students in a university environment uh, surrounded by some of the greatest colleges, whether it be in engineering or science or law or business or public policy, uh, is going to be an extraordinary opportunity to educate the future generation of physicians and academic leaders. Uh, but then also with the synergy, you know, the opportunity uh, to really develop breakthrough discoveries uh, that will help us solve, you know, some of the uh, morbidity and the mortalities of certain diseases that we still don't have answers to cure. That is within the realm of possibility for the School of Medicine, the Dell School of Medicine, uh, to help us move forward in improving the health of mankind, not only for Texas and our world. And so I'm just, as a physician, incredibly excited about this opportunity and also about helping us address some of the challenges in our healthcare workforce, and at the same time to be able to be doing this, you know, with our significant commitment also to improving the health of South Texas, uh, with also a creation of a school of medicine there. So, as Chancellor, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just can't imagine of being in a better place uh, and building a school in a better AAU university than than at UT Austin, but at the same time, you know, keeping our commitment uh, to the people of South Texas. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, I'd now like to turn it over to uh, President Bill Powers, UT Austin. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me begin by uh, giving my deepest thanks uh, to the Board of Regents, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the action that you took at this board meeting, which is a significant step forward in the creation of this medical school on our campus. Uh, but let me also thank the Board of Regents and the Chairman and the Chancellor and our other partners, uh, Seton, uh, Central Health, 
the voters of uh, Central Texas and of Austin who have partnered with us in what is, uh, I think, an historic partnership as we move forward. And I certainly want to thank uh, Senator Watson for his leadership uh, in this effort. Uh, this new medical school complex, as was mentioned, will be part of our academic campus. Uh, and this is a powerful connection. Our medical students will be walking uh, just aside uh, some of the most uh, innovative research in the world, not only in medicine, but in pharmacy, chemistry, medical business systems, legal systems, biomedical engineering, nursing, and many, many other fields. And they'll be learning shoulder to shoulder with the other professionals, professionals who will be on their teams in hospitals and clinics, professionals like nurses and social workers, pharmacists, all doing teamwork as they treat patients. This will be a great place to learn transformative medicine. We often say that what starts here changes the world. And here at UT Austin, we'll learn a lot more about the human body, how it reacts to disease and therapies, We'll learn a lot more about how to apply innovative business practices and delivery practices in our healthcare system. And we'll work closely with colleagues in the local community. And all of these things will change the world for the better. And most importantly, it will improve already good, but improving and improved healthcare delivery in Central Texas. So again, I'd like to thank our partners the Seton Healthcare fact, uh, family, Central Health, our Board of Regents, of course, Senator Watson, and the people of Central Texas for making this possible. Thank you. Jesus Garza, President CEO of uh, Seton Healthcare, would you like to make some comments? Yes, I do. Very, very brief comments. I, it's not going to take any more than 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we want to thank uh, UT Austin, the UT system, for the vision and the commitment they've made this morning to medical education. We're excited that our partnership with UT Austin and UT System will offer resident physicians world-class world -class training and research. We're grateful to our partner Central Health for sharing our vision that every person in Central Texas deserves the best available health care. And I can tell you that Seton Associates are eager to offer that level of care in Central Texas that's never seen before. And finally, and probably most importantly, we want to thank our community because we were, we're lucky to live in a community like Austin where we have the talent, the resources, and the sheer force of will that will create this, these kinds of visionary endeavors. So we're very fortunate to live in Central Texas and in Austin, Texas. Thank you, Aziz. Uh, Trish Young-Brown with uh, Central Health. Trish, would you like to make a few comments? I would. Thank you so much. It's wonderful being with you here today at Central Health. Our mission is to provide access to health care for our most vulnerable residents of Travis County. And we share a vision with our partners who are here with us today and wells with the residents of our community to build a system of health care that is integrated in its delivery and provides the best services to those who need care. We are grateful to the taxpayers of Travis County for investing in the vision to transform our delivery of care, upgrade our health care infrastructure, and improve the quality of life for all of our residents. The medical school is an essential cornerstone to transforming our healthcare delivery system. From innovative research on healthcare delivery to the faculty, residents, and medical students who will provide essential services to our community, the medical school will strengthen and expand our ability to provide access to care for our underinsured and uninsured citizens. On behalf of Central Health, I'd like to congratulate the University of Texas System Board of Regents on approving the plan to construct a new medical school. We look forward to strengthening our partnership with the University of Texas and the Seton Healthcare family, and together transforming our system of healthcare and improving access to quality care for every member of our community. Thank you, Thank Trish. You. Uh, we'll now open it up for questions. Um, like Chancellor Cigarro, if you've got questions for Chancellor Cigarro or any other uh, individual that's up here. Briefly talk about the timeline of things. President Powers. Um, well, there are a number of steps that we need to take. The step that the Board of Regents took both yesterday in the Facilities and Planning Committee and then today uh, on the Board was an important step forward so we can start attending to some of the 
design and construction uh, issues on the physical plant. Um, that was an important step forward. We're uh, still working with the coordinating board that's been very helpful and cooperative to get uh, approval there. And then we're, we, we have launched a search for a dean, which will be a significant step forward. Um, we'd like to have an entering class in 2016. Uh, that's an ambitious goal. We're still hope, uh, very, very uh, optimistic we'll meet that goal. Uh, there are a lot of steps between now and then, uh, just including the physical logistics and construction uh, of, the, of the facilities. And Bill, I think at the same time, as you're embarking upon the undergraduate medical education front, um, you're working uh, together with Dr. Simon so closely with Seton and Central Health in regards to expanding the residency programs yep. uh, on many, many fronts, uh, which is really quite spectacular as well. And we just had that's been going on for some time now, and that will that will continue. And you said this is the first on-campus medical school. Is it the first the one UT, the UT system? system. How did in, that happen? In Texas. In Texas. In Texas. Texas. Well, in Texas. Texas. It's the first example of a comprehensive medical school, physically located on an academic campus. Why, why did it take so long? <laughs> well, it has to do with history. It had to do with the fact that in, when the University of Texas was first established, that there was a plebiscite which determined that the medical branch would be in Galveston. And so the patent was followed to have separate health campuses. This is an extraordinary opportunity because for the first time, you will have physicians and students in physical proximity to the academic campus and vice versa. The, the faculty on the, at the, on the Austin campus will have physical proximity to a medical school and because of this unusual collaboration, which is very unique to have all of these players working together, there'll also be a teaching hospital supported through the hospital district and Seton so that the results of the research on the campus will be again physically adjacent to the, the opportunity in the hospital. This is a first in Texas we hope it's going to be a second in Texas because we're hoping that if everything goes well, there will be a medical school as part of the university to be established in South Texas so that that will be a second opportunity. A&M has indicated that it will try to administratively have its medical school become part of its academic campus. We applaud that, but again, they are, their major campuses are not physically located at College Station. So just back to the history, when the University of Texas at Austin was established, uh, the legislature asked the voters of Texas to find out where they would they would build the academic university and where the School of Medicine should be. And the voters said Galveston for the medical school and Austin for the academic campus. So it goes back to history, uh, but now we're, we're changing history now. I'm wondering what the timeline is for construction of the teaching hospital. Perhaps uh, Ms. Young Brown or Mr. Garza could address that, or both of you, yeah. since you're both involved in that. We're in the uh, obviously we've done all the preliminary planning. We have one additional step to uh, seek approval from uh, our parent, uh, Ascension Health Alliance. That should happen sometime this June. Uh, shortly after that, we'll do the detailed drawings that need to get done to begin construction. And sometime we're, we're anticipating to begin construction sometime shortly after that. And. Uh, as soon as the architects give us that schedule, we'll be able to publicly say this is what the will break ground. How many students are you planning to attract over time as a goal? Well, the plan now is to have an entering class of 50. Um, and things evolve over you know, over time, but that uh, initially there'll be a, a, a class of 50. Under the 50 first year medical students. As you've heard before, there's already uh, graduate medical education going on in Austin. And, uh, what, about, what about staff numbers and things like that? First year or whatever? That's, uh, it'll be substantial, but I don't have that figure. Just to follow up, when would you anticipate that the hospital would be operational? Uh, I want to say that uh, the, the preliminary plan was to have something that would be up and running sometime in the year 17. And Ralph, we can, that would be consistent with having a first year class coming in at 16 because they're, 
their work doesn't require the clinical work in the hospital in that in that first year. I don't know if anyone can um, address this at all, maybe too soon, but on the map and in hearing about the initial plans, there the Irwin Center doesn't have to be moved, but we have heard that possibly the Irwin Center will be moved. Can yes. anyone address that at this point? Yeah, I'll address it. Um, before uh, or as we're starting this, we we periodically do master plans for our campus, uh, and that was reported back by Larry Speck uh, from our architecture faculty and prominent architect in Austin yesterday. Um, it doesn't mean that every building will be built. It's that are we planning things over the next 25 and 30 years in a way that makes sense both economically and functionally. Uh, that expanded into then doing a master plan for this part of our campus as well, the medical part of our campus south of MLK and uh, down toward uh, and through uh, Brackenridge Hospital. Uh, for the first phase, the teaching hospital, the education administration building, and the research center, which are the, the bulk of the first phase, there's the parking also. That does not require uh, moving the Irwin Center, uh, including uh, space to lay down and set up for events and uh, things of that sort. Uh, there will be in the master plan, though not yet funded or approved, but you plan on further growth, a second phase, which also would not require moving of, of the Irwin Center. Um, at some point in the future, uh, we want to have the capacity uh, for growth of this medical complex. And at some point, if that growth takes place, uh, having the Irwin Center in the middle of it does not make sense. Uh, that is, from the medical school and teaching hospital point of view, uh, quite a ways off. Having said that, the Irwin Center is uh, 40 years old now um, and so it makes sense to plan or to start to have plans what would we end up doing with that but we have not we don't have plans currently to move it it's not necessary even for the second phase of the medical build out uh, that's something that uh, would take a lot of time and, and effort so that that's a long term we, we need to deal with that Possibility. What about the facilities that are there now? I think there's tennis courts and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Where, where are those going? The tennis courts uh, will need to be moved, and uh, we've been working very closely with athletics. We don't have a location for that. I do not anticipate that that will be a, uh, a problem. But we don't know where they're going to go. But we don't know where they're going to go. Uh, Dr. Cigarro, having come from you know, um, UT Health San, San Antonio, um, now coming here and seeing the creation of two medical schools, one here in Austin and soon to be down in the Valley. How does this feel for you to kind of see this whole fruition come down? <coughs> well, it's a remarkable feeling uh, in the sense that I, I am a uh, third generation physician in my own family. Uh, that, uh, you know, my father who uh, actually did not graduate from UT Austin because there was a shortage of physicians and so after his junior year, ended up having to leave the state to go to School of Medicine. Uh, this has always been a dream of his, uh, like it's been a dream of ours, uh, to create a School of Medicine at UT Austin. Uh, at the same time, um, for someone who has practiced in South Texas so very much, and seen also how underserved that region is in regards to helping improve the physician workforce shortage areas, to also be able to establish a School of Medicine in South Texas, this combination uh, for me, personally, uh, is one of the most important gifts uh, that I've been given to be able to play a leadership role on this front. On the other hand, none of this happens by self. Uh, this really requires a team. Uh, it requires leadership from the Board of Regents uh, to be in line with the vision, and then ultimately it requires the leadership of President Powers, and President Henrich, and so many others, such as Patricia and Jesus and others in South Texas, to be able to actually execute a vision into reality because these are monumental efforts, but at the end of the day, these efforts 
are going to save lives. It's going to prepare a generation of physicians and health professionals that will be second to none. And it's going to make our Lone Star State sparkle even brighter. So it's of, uh, of immense pride to me to be able to see this unfold uh, before this board and before this administration.